I'm glad to um, invite Matthias Sento from uh, Budapest University of Technology and Economics and uh, to talk about enhanced motion-based segmentation of vision-sensed environment of moving vehicles. So Matthias, you are, um, uh, please share your presentation. The screen is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, um, let me try and share my presentation quickly. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, you hopefully are able to see it. So thank you very much. Uh, two very interesting uh, presentations to follow here. Uh, both of them concerned um, autonomous driving, which is part of my presentation as well. So hopefully the audience is not really bored of that because then uh, you're in for another treat. Um, so I would like to give you uh, my presentation of the enhanced motion-based segmentation of vision-sensed environments of moving vehicles. Now, uh, this presentation was uh, created by myself. I am a PhD student here at the, at the Department of Control Theory and Information Technology, uh, together with my instructor, Dr. Aslo Loita, who is... Um, um, who is also working at this uh, department. So first of all, um, here's the outline of my presentation. Um, briefly, I would like to introduce our uh, crowd mapping platform. Then I would like to formulate the problem on which this research uh, was based. Um, I would like to give you a little um, tour, uh, if you will, about the related work. Uh, then I'll present the uh, current results that we have achieved and, uh, and uh, a little outlook on the uh, ongoing research that we are carrying out. So first of all, uh, our project, crowd mapping, which is, uh, which is a crowdsourcing uh, approach towards um, uh, creating and uh, maintaining uh, high definition maps for autonomous driving. So I don't want to go into much de uh, depth about autonomous vehicles and uh, and what they do because I think uh, Geza Deveni's uh, presentation pretty much uh, covered all the topics. Uh, however, I wanted to briefly touch on why uh, high definition maps are uh, indeed required for some of these ADAS systems and uh, on on higher levels of, of autonomy to to um, to uh, for for uh, autonomous vehicles, so um, a, a really important step or or really important task when you are when you are uh, developing these um, these vehicles these autonomous vehicles is that uh, you want to want them to be able to to navigate in um, in uh, rural and and um, uh, in city environments as well. And for that, uh, GPS and IMU uh, measurements are, are not necessarily, uh, and in, in every case, enough. So you would need a, a HD map uh, to, to give you a, a fallback solution or, or rather a, a first op solution. Um, so the, the platform that we came up with, it, uh, it looks like this. Um, Hopefully you can still see my screen because, uh, yeah. So, uh, so the crowd mapping platform uh, is constructed by this. It's built up of two main levels. So on the local levels, we have members of the crowd who uh, acquire images, who take images with their cars and, uh, and do some pre-processing. Pre um, uh, which includes optical flow calculation and image masking. Then uh, this, uh, this um, amount of data gathered by the crowd is uploaded to a, a remote level of this platform where uh, some in-cloud processing is performed. Um, the uh, map creation is performed, concatenation of the images. Um, and then storage, obviously, of the HD maps and, and responding to queries is performed. Um, 
So the problem statement comes from, from this setup. Um, we are gathering plenty of data. So we have a, a, a very uh, data intensive application, which requires uh, many, uh, many people in the, in the crowd, in the mass to, to upload their data uh, to a cloud. So uh, this gives a great burden on network capacity and uh, obviously data privacy and safety consideration must also be taken into account. Now, images on the roads are noisy, noisy in terms of the, the imaging system and uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, of, the, of the contents of the image. So a uh, high definition map should not include any dynamic data. Dynamic data meaning uh, other vehicles traveling on the road, pedestrians, um, birds flying in the, uh, above the buildings or, or next to the buildings and stuff like that. Um, and uh, and quasi-static uh, objects, for example, parking cars should also be uh, disregarded. So we have a solution proposal for this uh, problem. Uh, we want to identify static and quasi-static parts of the, of the image, mask the image accordingly, and then exclude the unnecessary information from the data upload, thus um, uh, easing the burden on the net network. So a quick look out to the, to the related works. Um, this problem then uh, comes into, into the area of, of image segmentation. Uh, the two articles mentioned here are both um, uh, survey articles about uh, image segmentation. The first one uh, is considering the, uh, the SLAM, so the simultaneous, simultaneous localization and mapping aspect of, of image segmentation, whereas the second one, uh, it, it considers um, um, any moving platform uh, mounted camera obtaining images and then dynamically segmenting that, those, um, those image sequences. Um, now our solution comes into the, the optical flow type of solutions from the first perspective and then the the object tracking is is what comes closer to closest to our our um, our research um, and then going a little more, little more in depth about the these uh, optical flow solutions that we see so um, moving platform uh, platforms and and optical flow calculations show up both in Zuetas and uh, Romero Cano and Nieto's uh, solution. However, they are both uh, using um, um, stereo cameras for, for, uh, for the depth estimation of the images. And uh, this is where our solution comes in. Uh, so our solution that we have published before, um, it is uh, a solution that only requires single images and, uh, and monocular uh, imaging. And based on the monocular images uh, and, uh, and having a, a UNET uh, deep learning structure on, on one side, uh, it is able to do a single image uh, depth estimation. Then based on this, an optical flow, an ideal optical flow and an actual optical flow is calculated. And then the two are compared, thus creating uh, the binary mask that we have. So on the bottom, you, on the right side, you can see uh, um, uh, the ground truth that we had um, in terms of the mask and then the results are um, our uh, first iteration yielded. So um, moving on from there, we, our new solutions uh, work with a little more deep learning, basically. So um, we have replaced the uh, Fernebeck algorithm that was, uh, uh, that was used for optical flow estimation or the dense optical flow estimation. We replaced that with, uh, with uh, one of the state of the art, art solutions for uh, uh, deep learning based optical flow calculations, that is uh, the raft uh, algorithm. So our pipeline for this solution looks like this. So we have two uh, input streams. One of them is the monocular, and I would like to stress that it's a single camera input. Uh, on, on one end, and then we have the uh, GPS and IMU uh, uh, sensor data. So based on 
each image frame, we calculate the depth with the with the uh, with the UNAT structure with the learned or trained um, depth estimator, and then we calculate uh, the optical flow for two consecutive images uh, on the on the upper side, and then on the lower side we calculate um, the uh, the ideal uh depth um sorry optical flow field based on the on the um, on the estimated depth and based on the um the signal of the gps and imu sensors so in this new solution we have managed to uh use three blocks uh with deep learning as you can see in an orange color so after the two uh optical flow fields are calculated the two are compared and uh and the um um the binary field is then is then uh, uh, calculated. The binary mask is then yielded from these two, um, uh, from comparing these two optical flow fields. So here you can see the the results of our of our new um, approach or or new algorithm. So we compared this with uh, with the two aforementioned results. So uh, as you can see, the F1 score is what tells us the most, I think, about the um, about the um, uh, the accuracy of of our of our solution, or the um, uh, it, it it gives us uh, the. Uh, um, and the be the best results that that tell us uh, how it how it actually performs the performance of the of the model. Uh, so the uh, as you can see, the two other methods they have a slightly higher F one score, so about ten ten uh, percent. But our solution, uh, as I stressed before, it considers or it uses monocular cameras. So uh, this reduces the computational cost of the algorithm, as well as the uh, the specificity of the of the devices or the or the equipment that has to be used. So with the current trends of onboard equipment and well-established optimization of this algorithm, this solution can be prepared to run in uh, real time in the future. So our other approach towards this was uh, the uh, dynamic and quasi-static mask refinement uh, approach or, or, um, or efforts. So we try to uh, refine the binary masks uh, using a couple of deep learning approaches. So on the upper, upper side, we have a semantic segmented uh, mask. And then on the lower side, we have a object detection and classification uh, block, uh, which yields us the, uh, the bounding boxes of, of some of the, uh, of the objects. The, those objects that we would naturally uh, consider not being part of the static environment. And then the two masks are fused together with the comparison block and, uh, and the, uh, the most accurate masks uh, uh, are, are, uh, are remaining. So the full mask gives us the, the best result that we can, we can achieve with this uh, workflow. So just a quick, um, uh, Note on the details: the uh, we have used for the object detection uh, block a Yolo V3 um, architecture. We have used uh, three, or we have tried three different architectures for the segmentation block, being PSP not deep lab V3 dense ASPP, and uh, for the for the uh, comparison block, we we gave it a uh, alpha. Um, uh, parameter which uh, standard which stood for the aggressivity of of the of the comparison so the algorithm was uh trained and tested on three different data sets that gave us uh as you can see uh with three separate uh alpha parameter parameters a a uh, a total uh, table of 91 experiments so um uh, at the risk of having this result a bit cherry picked, but uh, uh, this is this is the best result that we managed to come up with. So so 
from the from the image in the left, uh, we have managed to to um, to give it a a fairly good um, uh, masking. Uh, as you can see, the uh, the parking cars and, uh, and the pedestrians that are not necessarily moving that much are are uh, indeed masked out in the image on the right. So how we uh, would be able to, to continue our research. So we would like to fuse the two above mentioned uh, deep learning based segmentation algorithms. Um, and hopefully we would be able to increase the F1 scores. Uh, we would like to introduce uh, more precise depth estimation networks than the one we, we used before, uh, being other bins is currently what the uh, state of the art solution is and, and uh, we, are, we are trying to get that working with our system uh, or integrate that into our system and also uh, we would like to investigate the possible use of object segmentation masks, masks uh, networks for mask refinement. Um, so at the end of my presentation, I would like to give a shout out to Mr. Tomás Mészégető and Mr. Ashu Amodafar Mahmoud Mohamed, both of whom uh, um, um, essentially uh, gave their contributions to, to, this, uh, uh, to this research and without their works, it, it wouldn't have been possible. So thank you very much for your attention.